for a speech and call upon the third negative speaker, McKenna.
fundamentally that Fermi model undermines the long-term relationships that uh, aid organisations can build with local, local organisations and with governments. Those very relationships which Kieran was so keen to talk about. Because when you militarise, inevitably other people see you as a threat. Trust is absolutely the basis of operation for NGOs. Militarisation undermines this. On this issue of like the small side issue of whether these military uh, convoys are even going to be effective in protecting um, in protecting arms, we think it was kind of flip for Chris to stand up here and say, um, oh well, you know, we can look for people like there's no inherent advantage to having local knowledge or whatever because we can look for people on satellite images. But as speaker, I invite him to ask the United States and all its satellite technology about how successful that has been against groups like the Taliban with incredibly intense local knowledge. We do actually think it is a point of contention in this debate that these uh, these armed groups that are supposed to be protecting NGOs might not actually be successful in that mission. And in that way, we've undermined the trust unacceptably and they haven't even achieved a greater distribution of aid. Okay, but what if, like in some alternative universe, the, there was a greater distribution of aid under the affirmative model? Well, we think this has some appalling consequences that we're not happy to stand for. So, um, Manny wanted to get up in here and say that people already, already see NGOs as power players in conflict. And we just don't think that's true because, there, because of the reasons that I've always already presented to you about why they allow access in the first place. If NGOs are militarised, they are asking for a fight because they are making themselves a power player in that conflict and they, do, they, are, directly, uh, they are directly attacking the established power of the other groups in that area. On this point of uh, the current aid setup uh, making a great problem of power differential of, great, of different groups in a particular conflict that they talked about at Second Act. And we think, Madam Speaker, that Tom's response to this was the true one. Because taking Somalia as an example, as much as Somalis hate each other, they hate the West more. And when it's always possible for in groups, in, in long-running conflicts with many disparate groups, with varying motivations, whose alliances change over time, it is always possible for alliances to be formed between factions when, that, when there is a common enemy for those people to unite behind. So if you're not drawing from local forces, which they said they wouldn't be doing, if you're shipping in these outsiders, then you're creating this like Western imperialist uh, impression of the way that you're operating. Outsiders are the biggest threat in any conflict, Madam Speaker. It seems an imperialist force. And this speaks to my next problem about the more general relationships that countries and groups can develop with NGOs. Madam Speaker, as I just said, if you march in there with a bunch of well-resourced white guys, you fight a bunch of locals and tell them it's for their own benefit. That sounds a hell of a lot like imperialism to me. And you can sure as hell bet that the guy, the Al-Shabaab militant on the ground, is going to view it that way. Then you're going to see a bunch of people parachuting in and tell them how to live there, uh, how, to, you know, how to engage in their conflict. But onto this final issue of mistakes. And like the affirmative didn't even want to believe that mistakes were going to happen. But Madam Speaker, it only takes one stuff up to destroy the good name of NGOs is somewhere like Somalia. You tell one Somali that one idiot guy from Blackwater, or whatever they're calling themselves these days, raped one woman or killed one civilian, and you destroy that trust in all the NGOs. We don't believe that they're going to behave for these reasons of incentives. Like, the, the Fermanish team completely missed the point that PMC is misbehaving is on the grounds of individuals who are deviating from their mandate. We don't think that the US failed to tell Blackwater what to do in Iraq, and that's why they killed a bunch of civil civilians. Contracts haven't worked in the past. Madam Speaker, this model is appalling for conflicts and for the delivery of our proposal.